Good morning. <laughs> Everyone good this morning? Amen. Three people are good. How about everybody else? You good this morning? Thank you. Look at somebody and say, you look good. Look at the other person that you avoided and say, you look good too. <laughs> That's funny. We look good. You look good in the body of Christ, so we do look good. Amen. I am very excited. I'm going to be teaching and continuing um, in this series on the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, last week, um, you allowed me and Pastor Stephen allowed me to kind of go back and go back in um, to love. And so if you, I'm not going to go there today because I felt like it was a lot of information we covered. I got a lot of awesome texts. Thank you. Sometimes as a minister of the gospel and teaching the word, it is encouraging to know that you're encouraging. So thank you for encouraging us. <laughs> um, it's just nice. And so I got a lot of texts, um, even from people online that just said, hey, it really ministered to them. And uh, love is a tough subject, right? It's, um, sometimes we think it's soft. It's not soft. Um, and it's, but it's a fruit of the spirit. But today I'm going to go ahead and dive in um, to, to the subject on patience. And uh, that's um, going to be another one. Um, I was talking to my friend Vicki last night, and she said she was going to borrow her husband's steel shoes. So hopefully she wore those and we're good to go. I'm going to start off uh, not with our scripture of the year, but we're going to go to our scripture of the year. But I'm going to start off with our um, scripture for this series in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. So if you'll do me a favor, go ahead and go on your app on your phone. Um, or your device or whatever it is the scriptures are going to be up there but they're going to be also in here and I want to just do a little pause break um, for an announcement those of you while you're on the app um, you can do this after service or I'll let you do it right now and won't think anything about it um, but if you want to sign up to serve for our children's fest so if you have the ability um, and you don't have littles or you do have littles but you're going to bring them out a different night um, because Coastal Family Church is doing it three nights this year we do need several more volunteers so um, that time um, I think they're about an hour hour and a half maybe two hours if you stay for one part of it or you can stay the whole evening but go ahead and just sign up and just be a blessing for that we'll appreciate that Galatians 5, chapter 22 and 23. I'm going to read this and then we're going to go from there. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind, remember we love that, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Go ahead and say it with me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Amen. Let's pray together and agree for God's word to become revelation in our lives. Father God, we're so grateful. <clears throat> I'm so grateful. I'm very grateful to be able to um, just strengthen the body of Christ um, with your word. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give us ears to hear this morning. Uh, you give us eyes to see things that we've never seen before. I thank you that we do that so that we reach the hope of our calling because you've put us here on purpose and for a purpose. Uh, that we might not just take our years lightly um, and squander them, but that we might be diligent about what the master has for our life. We thank you that your word helps us to grow, and it brings revelation to our lives. In Jesus' name, and we receive it by faith, and everybody said, amen. 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 Now we're going to go ahead. If you want to, you can grab, there's a card in the seat pocket in front of you. Many of you might know it by heart already, but we're going to go ahead and go into our scripture of the year. I did a little um, talk um, on uh, some words that last week on that, but I'm going to hit the, a couple of different words this morning. So if you'll put up on the screen Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, this is out of the message translation. Then it's also, if you want to, in a card in the seat pocket in front of you, and then it's also on your app. Um, all right, here we go. There is more to come. We continue to shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to read it with me? Let's go for it. We always do, so let's do it together. There is more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. An alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now I'm going to be spending a little bit of time this whole service talking on patience. And uh, just searching my heart and even just learning and growing um, this week myself. And, and you know, because we all have an idea of what patience looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, what's interesting um, 
is when we read this portion of scripture, there's another one, um, we, did a, uh, we did a series in James right before this, but when we read this portion of scripture, I kind of looked over it several times yesterday, just kind of figuring it out. It would seem, it would appear to us, uh, you can put that scripture back up there, Chase, because I'd like for the people to see this. It would seem to me, when you look at it, it says, we are hemmed in with troubles because we know how what? Troubles can develop what? <clears throat> now there's an interesting word in there that we just need to have a little, we need to think about, we need to talk about. There's this three letter word called can, say can. Now, if you take out some of these words, people might read this like this. We are hemmed in with troubles because we know troubles develop. It would almost give the connotation that God brings the troubles. How many of you, well, you don't have to raise your hand if you want to, you can just nod or shrug. How many grew up in a denomination or kind of grew up thinking you go through hard things and God brings them? I see a couple of nods. Mm -hmm. Like you got in a car wreck and God brought that, let you happen because you needed a wake up call. There's, a, there's this connotation or this idea that God brings the troubles and then the troubles work their patience in you and that you're developed in character by the troubles. God doesn't bring troubles. We face troubles. The, we're not without troubles. The Bible says that we're going to have them. But, but as far as I can read in the scripture, it says that God comes to bring us life and bring it to us. He says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and I don't want us to be confused. And sometimes when we read portions of scripture, if we're not careful, if we don't dive into them, we can come to this thing. And even me, myself, I, you know, I want to I wrestle with some things inside of me because I do believe that we, we do go through difficult seasons in our life. We do go through hard things in our life, and we, we can't avoid hard things. We, we really can't bypass them. Mm, being led by the Holy Spirit, you can bypass way more. Everybody said amen. The Holy Spirit will lead you, he says, into green pastures. Even in Psalms it says, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no. So it could be a passing through, not a parking for years. Okay? So let's not be confused that God's bringing some sort of trouble to work your patience out, because he's not. The enemy brings troubles, though you can get developed, and I'm going to teach you how you develop your patience today, but I want to teach you, I want to mention to you where it doesn't come from first, because I don't want you to think that troubles, or that pa your patience is developed in troubles. Your patience is not developed in troubles, it can be developed when you go through difficult things. Amen? All right. Um, be, because this, how many of you know people that face all kinds of hard times, they've been facing hard times for years and they're still not patient? That would tell me that patience doesn't, or that troubles isn't, or that patience isn't worked out through troubles, because I know a lot of people who go through a lot of things and they're still not patient. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's different this week than last week, but it's good. Um, I, I want to say this to you, too, real quick, that, too, that patience is not a human quality, so if you think you need to grow in it, you do because you don't naturally have it. It's put there by the Holy so it's deposited in us by the Holy Spirit. It's not necessarily a human quality because we know this because we're impatient over everything. I mentioned it even last week, but we have a hard time waiting for almost anything. We think if something takes longer than 15 minutes, 10 minutes, we'll get all in a tizzy. Um, so we're not patient people, but I'm going to let you know who's patient so that we can mimic him. Um, go with me, uh, if you will, to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter, I'm going to be reading this out of the New Living Translation. Isaiah chapter 40, I'm going to read verses 28 through 31, 28 through 31. <clears throat> 
Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired. All the old people said amen. <laughs> the older people. And the youths will become weak and tired, and young men will, will fall in exhaustion. Say, but those. But those. But those who trust, or I have in parentheses, wait, who trust or wait in the Lord will find new what? They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I just want to let you know this morning that God never gives up. He never gets tired. He's never wore out. He's not even wore out with you, even if other people are. We're going to learn today that the, that the patience that we need to get only comes from one source, and that's from God. No trouble's going to work patience in you. No hardship's going to work patience in you. The only patience that you way you're going to grow in patience is by knowing who God is and by knowing his word. I'm just going to tell you something. All patience is is faith long term. That's all it is. It's faith long term. Patience comes from the word of God. The only it says here was so funny because here's the thing. It doesn't it doesn't exclude young men or old men. Every single person will grow weary, will go faint, will grow tired, will get exasperated, will will want to give up, and the only way to get patience is to wait on the Lord. It's the only way to get it. And uh you know, it's interesting because sometimes when we hear the word wait uh we kind of think it's like a, how many have taken an Uber before? Oh, not all of you. Um, sometimes when we, we think about waiting, because wait can mean two different things. We think about waiting as if we've called somebody, if we've called in something, and we're, and we're now waiting. Because when you call for an Uber driver, or you call for a taxi, or you call for something, and then you're waiting, you basically just kind of, you know, just do like this. Is that still a thing? Do people do these? <laughs> those, were, those were what you did when you were bored before you had toys. Um, and, um, and so a lot of people have this idea. We have this idea that when, when, we believe, when we're believing God for something or we're in the place of being patient, we have this idea that it's like this. Here's me just hanging out. We... we we're really, uh, it's, not, it's not a really good quality, but we, we sometimes wake up, eat breakfast, go to work, come home, eat dinner, watch a little TV, and we call that waiting. That's not called waiting. That's called lazy. It's really carnal, to be honest. We're not going to get into carnality tonight, today, um, but that, that's really carnality. That is not waiting on the Lord. That's lazy. It's quiet today. It's okay. But there is another kind of wait. Like when you go to a restaurant. Anybody in here ever been a waiter or a waitress? Okay. Now, if you've been a waiter or a waitress, you would know this. I don't think any of you are standing back in the kitchen like this. Like, I guess when they need me, they'll just give me a holler. Really, honestly, nobody's standing back in the kitchen like, I wonder if they're thirsty out there. Like, when they holler loud enough, I'll hear them. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> we have, but but here, what's interesting is, is we have this idea, but that's not the, the weight that we're doing is much like a waiter or a waitress. Because a, a good waiter, and a, I, I was just thinking about this even last night and again this morning, but a good waiter or a good waitress, they have this really awesome balance of not being overbearing but being attentive. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they're not up in your grill, but they, they're very aware of when your glass is half full. They're very aware of when you need something. They, they check in, but they don't interrupt you. 
And I'm, I, this is the picture that we need to have for the waiting. See, we're, that's who we are. We're the waiter or the waitress for God. And see, what we're doing is, is we're, check, we're constantly checking in. Hey, God, what, what, you, what you got for me today? And here's an interesting thing. Too many of us are interrupting him when he's trying to give us his order. He's trying to talk to us. And, 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 and here's the other thing, too. You being attentive, sometimes attentive doesn't mean badgering. Attentive means I'm going to wait, and I'm going to trust, and I'm going to sit in his presence. But I'm going to be aware of what God's talking and what he's speaking about. You know, uh, um, you know patience comes, it comes from the word of God. But I, I wanted to read some couple statistics to you. Now, I Googled this one statistic like four different ways. So if I'm wrong, you can text me. I won't be offended. I can be wrong. Um, but there's one statistic that's, that, I, that I do have right. This one, it's um, because I know that patience isn't something that is a natural quality in any of us. It comes from God. But listen to this statistic. 250 pastors leave the ministry per month. Per, not per year, per month. Now, check out this interesting statistic. There have been 782 thousand and thirty eight divorces in 2020 just if you want an encouraging note there's been way more marriages <laughs> but i didn't need to bring you that statistic seven hundred and eighty two thousand and thirty eight divorces in 2020 that is staggering most of it is because we don't have Pay, what do you want? Pay, because that person that you married to is squirrely. <laughs> and God is doing a work in them. And it's not finished yet. And sometimes we're so worried about how somebody else is acting instead of being worried about how we're acting that we give up too soon. And we're not patient with the process on the inside of them. Uh, you know, I... I I know this to be true about my walk with the Lord. I have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful generation uh, that went before me. My mom and dad, um, they uh, come second service, but my mom and dad have been married 61 years. I know I talk about them often, but I do know that their time on this earth is now limited, and so I'm, I'm very aware of their life on this earth. I'm very aware of the deposits that they've made into me, into this church, into just this generation, and what I realize is that the life of Christ is not, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And sometimes when people get saved or when they get called or they, they have a, you know, anybody ever know anybody that's gotten saved and they go from zero to 100? You know what? Zero to 100 is not acceleration. That's a wreck waiting to happen. And a lot of times when you ask people to just grow steadily in God, they abandon, they're, they're excited and they're on fire for about two minutes. And when it gets difficult, because guess what? Difficulty comes. Remember I said that. Do, do hard things happen? Do we wake up and want to read our Bibles every day? Do we do it anyway? Do we feel good? Not all the time. But when we create these disciplines in our life, we create a walk with God. And... Uh, I want to read you this scripture in Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, 11 and 12. I'm going to read it to you out of the NIV translation, the NIV. And it should be there. Are we ready? We want each, um, we want each of you to show the same diligence. Now, now he, the writer of Hebrews is telling you what they saw before in the forefathers. We want, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very what? Hmm. To the very what? So that what you hope for may be fully what? We don't want any of you to become. <laughs> we don't want any of you to become. But to imitate those who through faith and what? Inherited what has been promised. 
He, he's telling you, there's some people that have gone on before you. There are some people who have walked with God, and they um, experienced the promises of God. And he, what he tells me, that now, now what's interesting is, is we shouldn't just take things, we need to think about why these verses are written in there. He said, I don't want you to become lazy. Chase, put that up in the NLT. This is a very interesting word in the NLT. Then you won't become spiritually what? Dull, and what's the next word? And dull and indifferent. That's very interesting that we could become spiritually. I don't want you to become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, which leads me to the connotation that I could get dull and indifferent. This could happen to me if I don't walk my walk out with patience. You know, what's interesting about patience is that we don't get impatient all of a sudden. We don't go from patient to in. Well, sometimes we do. <laughs> but not so true with our walk with God. God is developing something within us. The word of God says that he's at work. I don't have the scripture on here, but you can look it up. It says he's at, he, he's at work within you to do his will, which means that I know this about this. The work of God is an ongoing process that's happening within me, and I don't want to abandon it f too quickly. There are a lot of things that I still have yet to be developed in me and a lot of things that still yet God wants me to do for him. And if I grow patient, if I grow impatient, but what I know is that sometimes we grow impatient to, we, with the process of what's happening in our lives, like I'm believing God for this and it didn't happen the way I wanted it to or this didn't happen quickly enough for me or my spouse didn't respond quickly enough for me or my, I didn't get enough. I, how many people, man, you meet somebody, they got a new job. Man, this job is from God, God, God. God gave me this. Believe God, God. Two, two months later, this job is not from God, not God, not God. <laughs> I, I often wonder how, how confused God is. We make him out to be confusing because you're not willing, we're not willing to let the patience of God be worked in us. Now, I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you to Numbers chapter 10. Now, I'm super excited about this part. I'm going to take you because I love Old Testament um, um, uh, metaphors and, and, and how we can play with it in our, in, our, in our lives now in the New Testament. Go with me to Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10, verse 11. Now, I'm going to hop around, but it'll be up on the screen for you. So Numbers chapter 10, and I'm just going to read this very first part, this very first stanza. I'm not going to go into all of it. Um, in, this very, uh, in Numbers chapter 10, verse 11, it says, In the second year of Israel's departure from Egypt. Say second year. If you read on further, um, you'll see this. It's the second year, and I think the second month and the 20th day. So now the Israelites have been out. You can take it down, Chase. The Israelites have been out of Egypt. Moses brought them out. They've been out now two years and two months. Now, they saw some amazing, miraculous things. The sea got parted. I'm telling you, they, I mean, they saw plagues. God miraculously delivered them. Now, say two years. Now, go with me. To Numbers chapter 11, same, same part, just go on down. Numbers 11, verse, verse 1. Verse 1. Numbers 11, verse 1. Here we go. Soon the people began to... <laughs> Two years! Soon the people began to complain about their what? And the Lord heard everything they said. Two... Two stinking years. For the love of God, has anybody seen a sea parted? A sea parted. Now go with me. Now I have never seen this portion of scripture. I have read it, but I've never seen it like the Holy Spirit showed it to me. Go with me to verse 4. Verse 4. Then the foreign rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. Then the foreign rabble has, now I've studied this portion of scripture several times. I have never, ever, ever once let my eyes sit on that. The foreign rabble. What's interesting to me when I look this up, these are people that really were from Egypt that got in on the escape. They weren't really believers. They were people of Egypt 
and when they must have wanted out, and so they got out with them. They were foreigners. And they said, the foreigners, the people that weren't really with God, who were traveling with them, began to crave. Began to crave the things that they used to. Now, it's interesting to me because I know this, and you know this, when we leave the things of the world, because that's what we do when we become a believer, it says that we turn and we leave the things of our past and we step into our future. Sometimes we take with us some rabble. You can just smile. You take some rabble with you. And you know what's interesting is, is when you start to complain, you know who's, who perks up the most? The rabblers. The ra- you, you, you know, you're serving God, and it's been two years, two years, two years I married this man. And he's on my nerves. And what's going to happen is, is, you know who's going to poke their head up? The rabbler. The non-believer friend that you're lending an ear to. The person who's not in your camp that you ought to be listening to that's building you up in faith. The rabbler. And what happens? Now check this out. Check this out. Woo! I'm going to get excited all by myself. It goes on. It says, and it says, traveling with the Israelites, they begin to crave the good things of Egypt. And, and, and the people of Israel also, also, they begin to join in with the rabblers. They also begin to complain. Oh, for some meat. We are sick of being vegetarians. They exclaimed, we remember. Remember what? What, what in God's creation are they remembering? The slavery? The abuse? The neglect? We, some, they remember some fish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we got good fish, and I sure as heck wouldn't be slave to want to eat it. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. Oh, I was in bondage, but my fish was free. And we had all the cucumbers. I can't stand cucumbers, or melons, or leeks, or onions, and I like garlic a little bit. But now our appetites are gone, and all we ever see is manna. I'm telling you, before when I used to live this life, I used to hang out with my friends and I used to party and we used to hang out. It was so good, so good. Now I got this husband. He's a nag. It was so good. Before when I used to do that, like I, I and now I just got this and I just got a, I got a, I got a job. I got to go to. And I, I don't get to live for free anymore. It's called a J-O-B. Stop complaining. You believe God for one. I just wish I could go back to the way things were unsaved, going for hell. That's the part that you're remembering? Those were the good old days. No, those were the hell-bound days. Don't refer to them as the good old days. The manna looked in like small coriander seeds, and it was pale and yellow like gum resin. They're making it bad, man. This is disgusting. And the people, <laughs> my walk with God is so boring. I just wake up and go to church and do my small group. And the people would go out and gather the ground, and they made flour by grinding it with their hand mills or pounding it into the mortars. And then they boiled, they even got to boil it in a pot and made it into cakes, and the cakes tasted like pastries. And the manna came down on the camp with the dew, and God was providing for them. And Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tent. whining about provision showing up every single day of their life whining about the deliverance that god had brought why'd you bring us out here we just don't have manna some of you you have forgot what god has brought you out of and the victory that you live in, and the healed body that you're walking in, and the sound mind that you have. And if it won't just for any of that, for the eternity that you're going to have walking on the streets of gold. And we're standing at our, this isn't really working out the way I want it to. I thought we were going to have a house by now. I thought, I just, I just thought this is going to look very different when I married you. You look so good on Instagram.
And now I'm married to you, and it's not that good. You picked. You picked. I don't want any whiny babies. And actually, neither does God. So let me give you three things. Three things today to check out if your patience is growing impatient. The first thing they begin to do is, you can write notes down, it's in your app. The first thing they do is they begin to complain. If you find yourself complaining, you're losing your patience. You're losing your patience. Stop complaining. Get into the word. For every promise, there's a scripture. For everything that you're believing, open your book, man. I'm just telling you, open the book. It's full. The, bro- the word of God says, and all his promises are yes and amen. Open it up, man. If you're believing God for your body, if you're believing God for your marriage, if you're believing God for your future, if you're believing God for your job, if you're believing God for peace, if you're believing God for joy, there's a verse in there about it. And you can stop, guess what? I know this, that you can't complain and be happy at the same time. Both can't come. The Bible says blessings and cursings cannot come out of the same mouth. It's not even doable. It's not even doable. The next thing that happened is this, is their emotions began to take a front seat. Their emotions began to take a front seat in their life. They went only, they went from complaining So here's an interesting thing. They went from complaining to standing at their doorways whining. Whining. Now, I'm going to read to you, if it's okay with you, I'm going to read to you, uh, this is about the fourth or fifth time that I've done a small group, or wasn't a small group, our interns read this book. Um, and that's how we kind of got started on it, I think. And, um, but I, I'm in a small group right now reading it. I just finished a small group on reading it. But this book, by an, it's called Anonymous. And I want to read you this interesting thing about our emotions. About our emotions. It says this. It says, we have to first, first we have to distinguish our roaring desires from truth. And that is no minor task. Check this out. Now listen intently because it's not on the screen. You need to hear me. Most of us have been quite successfully conditioned to determine truth through the filter of our feelings. Do we feel it? Then it's true. Or so we're told. But emotions are not truth's vocal twin. And feelings are not the litmus test for reality. Our emotions and feelings are simply reactions to our environments, circumstances, and perceptions. Woo! By nature, check this out, by nature they are followers, and we place our souls in danger when we require them to take the lead. Truth, on the other hand, was born to lead. God's truth clears the fog in our minds and provides a much needed, say much needed, much needed boundaries for our emotions. The truth of God's word will provide you with a much needed boundary for your emotions. When your emotions go haywire, guess what? The word of God will give them a boundary so you won't be standing at your doorpost whining. You know what I realized about the Israelites? They didn't need natural bread. They needed spiritual bread. They needed to put themselves in remembrance of the God who had brought them out and stir their faith up. I wrote this down this morning. There is a process on the way to the promise. And sometimes if we're not willing to work this process out in our lives, we never reach the promise that God has for us. Do you know what's interesting is those Israelites that crossed the Red Sea, they, or the, crossed, yeah, the Red Sea, they never even got to enjoy the promised land. Never even got to. They spent so much time walking around a desert complaining that they never even got to enjoy the good things that God had for them. I'm going to read you a couple closing scriptures. Rashid, you can come on up, son. Oh. Hi, Rashid. I'm going to read you two scriptures. Pop, you can come up too if you want to. Hebrews 12, 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great, it's Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. In the New Living. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses to this life of faith, 
Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with what? Or patience. The race that God has set before us. We do this. Say do this. He's getting ready to tell you how to run the race. How do you run with endurance? How do you have patience in your life? It says we do this by keeping our eyes on what? Jesus, the champion. Now, I love this. I love this. Who initiates and what? Not, so listen, here's the really amazing part about it. God not only began the good work in you, but he's also perfecting the, don't let him just initiate something for, for, in you and then walk away from the perfecting part of the process. He's initiating something in you and then he's perfecting it in you. And you got to do, the only way it gets done by keeping your eyes on Jesus. It says he's the author and the finisher of your faith. I want you to see one more verse, one more verse, one more verse. Luke 8. Luke 8, verse 15. Luke 8, verse 15. I love these verses. And the seeds that fell on good soil represent honest, good-hearted people. Now check this out. Good-hearted people who hear God's word and what? Not just hear it. Not just, say, not just hear it. Not just hear it. I'm not a, I'm not a hearer only. But when I hear, listen, you ought to love your Bible like this. You, can I tell you something? I love this more than I love him. And my kids and my grandkids, I love, I love God's word and the truth of God's word. Because guess what? I'm not going to, I'm going to be a stinky wife if I don't love this more than I love him. But I cling to the word of God in my life and I cling to it. And then it says this, and it says, and pay, oh, and patiently produce what? A tiny one you want a huge harvest in your life you're believing God for some things in your life you want to patiently 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 not this patiently not this patient not are we there yet this patiently oh wait wait where's that scripture oh where's that scripture where's the scripture oh yeah 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 oh who am I gonna call who am I gonna call who am I gonna not those rabbles I'm gonna call people full of faith full of the Holy Ghost in my life. And they're gonna encourage me and strengthen me. And I'm gonna have a huge harvest. Amen, amen. I think that's it. We're gonna sing. So, we, so um, I asked Rashid to learn this song from Brother Keith. So we're gonna piddle around with it and see what we can come up with. We're not nervous and so you shouldn't be either. And Pop's gonna try to sing it and I'm gonna try. Stand up, it'd be fun. Take a moment, it's kind of a message that checks you up a little bit. Maybe close your eyes. Let's drop the lights down out there, guys. Kind of forget everybody that's next to you. There's a song that uh, we've kind of stirred up into our hearts, back into our spirit. And it's, the words kind of go like this. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord, I do. Try that with me. I trust you. I trust you, I trust you, Lord, I do. Okay, next few words. I never even worry that I might not make it through because I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, Lord, I do. Oh, I don't need to understand. You want me to help you out? Somebody's got oh, help I'll tell. All right, let's start again. Here we go. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord, I do. I never even worry that I might not make it through because I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord, I do. Because I know you love me, I will always make it through. I don't need to understand all about the working of your plan. I don't have to always see everything that lies ahead of me. 
But as long as I can know I'm in the power of your hand I can believe You are gonna make me stand <laughs> You know when it comes to trust It's really an interesting thing to think about How deceiving your desires And your past thoughts and that are the enemy loves to come alongside all of us and get us deceived and to think things are definitely better on the backside. And how many have ever made mistakes on the backside that you wish you could take back? Well, it's interesting to see that this truth about patience. You know, it's, I love the fact that she said that sometimes patience is not necessarily developed in the trouble. It's actually already developed on the inside of you. Amen. And one way for that patience to begin to grow is to set your heart aside daily to yield to the truth and the things of God. When you make that step, you've really stepped into a place where patience become, really begins to maybe show up in a place you didn't think it would. Amen. Amen. Let's do this this morning. Let's just close our eyes. Across the room today, if you just... Say, Father God, I just want your perfect patience worked out in my life. Just raise your hand. I just want to get in agreement with you. You just want his patience. I see it. 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 I want his patience worked out. We're not going to be in a hurry. God's working on your behalf. Amen. Father God, I just thank you for today's service. I thank you for your words of correction and instruction. I thank you, Father God that you're developing within us the ability to stay strong and the ability to withstand and that your patience is being worked in us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. You can flip the lights on a little bit so I can see their sweet faces. Sorry. You know, uh, you are, I'm going to let you go. Is that all right if I just let them go? Okay. Um, I just want to let you know a couple announcements. One is that uh, for Children's Fest, I already made that announcement, but if you want to bring your kids or if you want to serve, that's on our app too. And if you want to be a blessing and so towards that, that's on our app too. So just make yourself familiar with that. Um, we have growth track the very end of this month. Um, just an opportunity where we get to know you and develop those gifts that are inside of you. Um, and it's the last one the, of this year, of 2020. So if you haven't gone, we'd love to have you. I think that's it this morning. We adore you. We'll just meet you at the back and get to greet you. Have an amazing, amazing, blessed day. What's going on, guys? Wasn't that a great word today? Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us at the end, I want to give you a few little tips um, and some instruction that you can do to start your relationship off with God uh, at a strong start here. What I'm going to need you to do is download our Coastal Family Church app. Once you've downloaded it, you can go to the I Have Decided part. And it's real simple. You're just going to fill out a little bit of some information that we're going to then get in our hands so we can give you some things, some free material, such as a Bible, so you can begin to read God's Word daily. Um, God's Word is such a vital tool for you in your walk with Christ, so we want you to be in it daily. Another great thing about this app that you're going to download is it's always going to have our sermon notes as well as the Bible verses that we used in the message. So just definitely download that. It's such a vital tool for you um, for here at Coastal. And then the other thing I want to talk to you about today before we close out our online service is that um, be on the lookout for things on our website at CoastalFamilyChurch.com or through our app, Coastal Family Church app. Guys, we're always having things going on in there, whether it's small groups, growth track, an upcoming event. Uh, so download that app or get on the website so you can see what's going on inside of Coastal or outside of Coastal. We just want you to be up to date with what we're doing, guys, and be able to be a part. We love you so much. We'll see you back next week.